Hello, it's James here. Yes, it's another backboard video. This is something I built in the past. There's three videos in my channel, which involve building all the mechanics, the active electronics. It's got electric steering, so it can be driven remotely by radio control, because that's what Batman would have. But since then, I've made an entirely 3D printed bat suit. So the best thing, it seemed, was to actually ride the backboard dressed as Batman, of course. We've got a few things to fix up on the board, so let's get started. The first thing I really need to do here is fix the steering. So we've got this chain drive from a wiper motor and this works exactly the same way as the wiper motor big servo project that I put up recently that tells you how to use a wiper motor as a radio control servo. It's exactly the same code in fact and this chain is just driving the front steering there so basically this is a big RC servo of course controlled from the RC transmitter and receiver. Now there is a feedback pot required in order that the servo can drag its position and at the moment that feedback pot is below this big pulley here. You can see a piece of string which goes around the front steering as well and that's how it gets feedback. But this hasn't been very reliable unfortunately sometimes the string falls off at the other end and then I completely lose steering. So what we're going to do instead is install another feedback pot on the chain. So we're going to use a 10 turn pot which is a pot that turns around 10 times because a single turn isn't enough. We've got a sprocket that matches the chain and we're going to stick that just there mounting the pot. So as the chain moves obviously the sprocket turns. Now I was going to put a rubber wheel on the other side which holds the chain in the sprocket so it doesn't skip. But I've realised if I just put that really near the motor uh, then there's much less likely the chain's going to pop out and there's hardly any force required to turn the pot. So I think that's going to be a good solution. Right, I've swapped that pot over, put the wires onto that pot instead, and now we can see that runs perfectly well in the chain. There is a point, of course, when one side of the chain goes slack and the other one pulls tight as it moves the wheels, but the teeth are so close they're almost touching on these two sprockets, so I don't think the chain's going to drop out. We could of course have another idler holding the chain, but um, I think that'll be all right for now. As well as that, we desperately need to sort out the electronics that actually control the board. So um, some of this has all been in pieces, but essentially we've got two of these 24 volt batteries, both with VESC ESCs to power the two motors. So that's fine. Those plugged in with a splitter cable into the radio control receiver. But then for the steering, there's an Arduino Pro Mini floating around on some strip board. And that was powered by a separate USB boost adapter with one of these USB serial programmers attached to the Pro Mini. Then we've got another battery that controls the actual steering motor. So uh, I think the, the VESC ESCs have a battery eliminator circuit which powers the radio control receiver. So there's two lots of five volts, two 24 volts and another 12 volt battery. So I'm gonna try and uh, tidy up at least some of the electronics and the power that controls them because this uh, USB thing and the USB boost adapter is really unreliable. And that sometimes causes the Arduino to reset and cause the steering to go to its zero position, which is full lock and for me to fall off. All right, so I've implemented this, which is a 3D print, which now holds a power switch, a mode switch, a voltage regulator, the RC receiver, and the original Arduino. So everything's uh, compact there. That can stick on my backboard inside the cosmetics when I put those back on. We've got our VESCs wired up now. That is the motor driver for the steering, and everything's in one compact lump. So if we switch our mode switch over to radio control, we can hear the motors spinning. And also the steering works but I don't want to use this controller when I'm standing on it because I have to use two hands and it's really difficult. I want the one hand to hold on with essentially. So that's what the mode switch is for. So we're going to build a second controller. Yes, it's my one-handed bat controller, which I'm going to use to drive with one hand so I can hold on with the other hands. So I thought about various ways of controlling the board, including laser guided, which is what I mentioned in the last video, where I was going to shine a laser on the ground in front of me and have a camera pick out the green dot and try and steer the wheels. That turned out not to be so practical. So what I'm actually going to do is something where I lean to steer and lean to ride, a bit like one of those hoverboards, the two-wheel balancing boards. So I was going to have some elaborate arrangement of strings and pulleys attached to my hips on some towers at the side that as I lean it would measure which way I was going in a triangle and be able to steer and operate the throttle but in the end I decided I don't want to really be tied to the board in case I have to jump off so we're going to use this back controller which is going to have an inertial measurement unit in so as I lean and it tilts that'll operate the throttle so I can literally lean into the board and it should catch me as I'm going forward like a balance board and obviously sideways I'll operate the steering and I can also lean it further sideways 
which is a bit how you'd ride a skateboard leaning to steer by using your ankles to tilt the board. I can still sort of tilt extra sharp if I want to without leaning my whole body over. And the big red button is basically the dead man's handle, so the throttle doesn't work unless I'm pressing the button. If I let go, it screeches to a halt and I can jump off, but the steering is unaffected, which means I can swerve and brake at the same time if I really need to. So I'm not gonna go through the code, but this is an MPU 6050 using the library from Jeff Roberg, I squared C dev lib. So uh, this is what I normally do in projects. It's sending serial data, so we've got the IMU in this orientation, in fact, attached to an Arduino, and that's then sending the data out to the rest of the system. And the reason for that is that the IMU uses interrupts, and so do servos, which we're using for those PWM signals to drive the uh, VESCs, the actual motor drivers, so that would be a bad idea. So for that reason, I've separated the IMU reading onto this Arduino. It sends serial data down the wire to the other one. The other one just deals with the speed controlling. So as you can see from the display there, I've got my roll there, which is my second value, and that is for the steering. And obviously the other one, the throttle is zero until I press the big red button and then it starts outputting values as I lean it. And of course, if I were to let go of the button, then it will give me zero and that will cause the motor drivers to screech to a halt. So now if I power this on, the default mode is the radio controller. So that's my steering and obviously that's my throttle forward and reverse. And if I switch over the mode switch, now we should find the back controller works. So now this is steering. And obviously we get nothing until we hit the throttle button. There's a bit of a dead spot, about five degrees either way. So that means I don't have to just keep it balanced in the middle. Obviously the steering, there's no dead spot, so. We'll see how we get on with that. And I've also got a safety feature, so if this is running, but the cable comes unplugged, then it stops. So I've now fitted my electronics in here and put the back on the board again. And I strain relieved a much thicker cable onto this and again here, and there's also a connector so I can remove it completely and take that away and just run it in radio control mode. So it's still pretty tricky to ride standing up, so I think I need a handle to hold onto with the other hand. Yes, I made a metal stick. It's got brackets on and I welded over them. I don't quite trust my welds yet. So I've screwed it on with self tappers and welded over it and it's got plates on both sides. So it should be pretty strong. So hopefully that gives me the extra stability I need just to support myself so I can lean into the acceleration. I'm at Wilton Mill Cart Circuit in Northampton in England where they've allowed me to test the backboard on their track.
am still in one piece and so is the backboard. That's amazing. Thanks again to Wilton Mill for letting me test on their cart track. Don't forget to subscribe for more bat updates and updates on other projects. All right, that's all for now.